So tear test for laminating film. Got a little bit of old fuselage there. Uh, my 38 uh, micron laminating film. And I'm just going to check the temperature. So I'm going to put this on at a fairly low temperature, around about 100 degrees or so. So uh, let's just have a look, see if we can get them both on the screen at the same time. Yeah, just over 100. So there we go. I'll use that to set the film on there first of all. Just tack it down. Pulling it relatively tight. That's okay, just check that one edge there. The only reason I'm doing this is I'm going to wind the temperature up to about 150 degrees to tension the, oops, tension the laminating film. There. So I could use the hot air gun now. I'm going to turn my iron up now just wait for it to get up to temperature so this is not an exercise in how to cover with laminating film this is an exercise in i want to puncture the film and i want to test its tear resistance <clears throat> so again move to one side let's see if i can Coming up to temperature, give it a bit more time. <clears throat> but you can see that even at the low temperature, just as an aside, even at the low temperature, the laminating film has gone clear, which could lead you to believe, oh, that, that's absolutely fine for it. Yes, it has stuck down, but laminating film really is designed to work in a roughly the area of about 150 degrees C. So I need to wind the temperature up to really get the film to uh, to shrink. You can see there, it's, when I press on that, depress that, you can see it going in. Again, I'll just <clears throat> check. Up to 140-ish, where I depend where I am on the, yeah. So that's good. So we're now going to just lightly run over the film with the iron. Hot air gun would have done exactly the same thing. It's gone nice and tight there. Quite good at all temperatures really laminate when I say all temperatures high temperatures laminating film it's much more tolerant and don't forget I am using 38 micron as opposed to anything thicker than that I've got to make sure I keep on camera apologies for that okay so that will more or less do me just In fact, what I'll do as well is I'll get the heat gun and put that on there as well, just to see if um, that tightens up anymore. Shouldn't need to, but <clears throat> might as well while I'm doing this experiment. So the one I'm going to use for this is a uh, good old Hobby King one. It's got a very narrow nozzle because that's what I use for my uh, shrink tubing but I'm going to leave that nozzle on. I could 
take that off and have a wider nozzle. I can also set my temperature on here, upside down, you can see, but let it get up to temperature. I always like to run it over my hand just to make sure. Ow, that was hot. Just running it over. I might do as an experiment in a minute and see how close I can get with the hot air gun, bearing in mind this is at a, even a higher temperature than my iron and see how tolerant the film is to heat and I'm going to do it on this one section down here make sure that's all stuck I'll do it down here and let's just see what happens I'm just getting a hole forming there that's with it really pushed up close to it as you can see and switch that off that's still cooling down but you can see it's there's a hole that's formed in there where too much heat applied to it press my nail in that to try and tear it and I can tear it but I've really got to press hard to do that really got to press hard so what I'm going to do now is simulate a uh, puncture or well, former puncture simulating I don't know, landing in stubble or something like that and see how tolerant this is to that. So I get a bit of piano wire. Let's <clears throat> uh, get suitable, Oops. suitable test. There we go. Should have done this beforehand. So here's a bit of piano wire, see there. So I'm going to drop this from a height, firstly, because some people have asked how tolerant is it. See, I'm dropping this. I'm going to drop this from a height of six inches now there. You can see that it's made some dents in the film, hasn't punctured the film at all. And the dents you can see there, hopefully, if I might need to wind the temperature up, but I go back over that with the, the ceiling iron or the, my little covering iron here. And not quite up to temperature on this one, but you can see that the dents are more or less gone. there but it didn't puncture the film okay so that's that but I now actually want to puncture the film so I'm gonna push the and it takes a heck of a lot of effort to do that a heck of a lot of effort now with that 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 puncture in place I'm gonna manipulate the it I've actually pushed the balsa in but I'm pushing that all around just to try and get it to, to tear and you can see it hasn't torn any more than the the puncture hole that was in there that I made let's see if I can get it to tear by using heat on it So I've wound the heat up. I'm trying to get it to... I'm localising that heat and I'm up to 140, 150 degrees with the iron again there. Let's wind that up even more. Put it up to the highest setting on the iron. Give it a chance to um, get up to temperature. Do it on that really open one down at the bottom there. That'll be interesting. Unlike the likes of um, ordinary cover covering film, solar film, uh, Hobby King film, and that 
you know, this this is far superior in my opinion. So going back to my damaged panel here with a hole in it, I don't expect, expect it to really tension up, obviously, because it's got a, a split in the middle of it. But you know what? That's not doing too bad at all there. But what it hasn't done, if I can just shine the light on it, that hole hasn't torn any more. I can press around it and it's not tearing. So I think that's fairly conclusive for laminating film. OK, I'm not comparing it like for like with ordinary covering film. Laminating film is very, very resilient. 